right, all right, fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> comics we're going i'm getting controversial today we're gonna get controversial today with with my my proudest moment is this interview and being able to talk to you too Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Taurus mm-hmm. Comics in collaboration with Fourth Wall Production mm-hmm. respectfully brings to you the 53rd episode of the Four Tales podcast. I'm your host, Kyron Silva from Taurus Comics. Across the way is the Mulberry contributor of Ace Blade, Danny J. Quick. And together we are your two award-winning Blurred Comic Creators here to help you find your next favorite comic. We are live on the Aegis of Geekdom platform, which is on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. So if you're listening or watching us live, thank you for your support. But don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and review our podcast and Age of Geekdom. Because all your positive reviews and interactions help us reach a bigger audience. All right, Danny, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you, man? Hey, congratulations, man. I saw you got a a, a big boost from um, your your Sacramento uh, brethren. The um the radio show host they got your oh, okay. heart up on their um on their sh- on their store. I didn't know what the hell you were going at with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where does why, he do it? Why don't why don't people trust me? I, every time I come to start congratulating somebody, they always look at me like, where is he going with this? And I'm like, yo, I genuinely am proud of you. And I wanted to say that. I wanted to say that I'm proud of you. You out here making moves and and being a genuine dude and like providing art for people and it turned into something that i thought was kind of cool so that's that's awesome bro i appreciate it uh for anybody that's listening and doesn't know what danny's talking about i was doing some fan art for a local radio store it's actually the number one sports show here in northern california um i was just doing fan art of the host just recreating them as some famous comic covers like uh the george perez avengers reborn and things like that um I did Amazing Fantasy number 15. You know, just just the, the big ones, some little ones, just ones I really liked. And uh, they ended up reaching out to me and they said, hey, I like your stuff. Um, and we want to turn those images into a line of apparel for their website. So if you uh, if you look up D'Lo and Casey, which is the name of the radio show here in Sacramento, they're going to have a website there where they sell their own stuff. And you'll find there's going to be a Taurus Comics section, which is just going to feature my artwork on their apparel. Um, so, you know, right now there's just a hoodie, but there's, I think I did like 19 images for them um, all together. Yeah, it was, I was bored. I was using them as warm ups more than anything because I, I needed something to start getting the juices flowing to draw in uh, um, horses and, and Western towns that I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Um, I think you're doing just fine, though. Um, thank you. But also, Congratulations to your Sacramento Kings, uh, who, along with my Lakers, have two wins for the season. <laughs> this is a bad year for sports. Right? Hey, <laughs> we are racing to five wins. We're gonna we have a competition. I, who do you who do you think is gonna get the five wins first? The Kings Lakers. or the Lakers? Lakers. You think the Lakers will get the five before yeah. the Kings will? No, okay, <laughs> only not- because. Only because the first part of our schedule is horrendous. Like Ours we're too. playing, we got, we got tough. Like the next next ten games are really could be all losses. Like <laughs> it's it's really bad, bro. Like, <laughs> but y'all got Russell Westbrook though. You got this. Still, I mean, and 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 don't get me wrong. Like watching the Lakers play, mm-hmm. I think they are very competitive, and sure. they are playing good defense okay. and. They're showing spurts of being a, a decent team, but there's always something. It's always like, okay, when they played the uh, when they played New Orleans, like um, Brandon Ingram was out, like they had their their one of their defensive stars was injured, you know, and they barely won that game. But they played good, like it was competitive. But the team is just not great yet. They just they're fun to watch, and they have been competitive in every game except for this last one. They Jazz yeah. destroyed them. But um, 
but you know it's still fun to watch i think the kings i don't know what what do you mean you don't know the kings like in preseason they did really good i thought i was like yo they they have a a -hmm. bunch of decent players you know we do but some reason y'all just not winning games i didn't i don't get it i think it's i think it's just like the lakers it's going to take time for them to get together um we got a bunch of new players, but we got good new players though, like Kevin Herter, Malik Monk. They're actually playing really good. Yeah. Um, Kings have right. Wow, wow, Javon with Kings will have a winning season right before the apocalypse. <laughs> Terrible. Hey, I mean, it's, I know it's been a minute, but dang, you ain't gotta be like that, Javon. <laughs> I don't know, but I think I think we will improve. I still think we can at least hit the play in. Mm-hmm. I think it's just going to take time. We just got a bunch of new people. Um, our rookie looks great, dude. Our, our rookie looks like a young Tim Duncan at this point, just not as tall. Um, he has the, no no emotion at all, just likes to play, and I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what's about to happen this year. I like it. All right. All right. You know what else I'm excited for, though? What? I'm excited for our guest today. Me too. Um, he's an illustrator, from my understanding. Um, yes. I think we've talked to him before, like not too long ago, actually. I mean, it was, like recently we talked. Yeah, to him. it was like recently, like you know, maybe within the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, we're gonna bring on uh, Ryan Robinson. He's here to talk about his lovely pool and uh, some books that he's illustrated. I'm assuming. But what's going on, Ryan? How you doing? Is he? Are you muted? Is uh, Ryan okay. muted? No, he's not muted. I was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> muted for a second. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, Ryan, for anybody that isn't familiar with you, maybe didn't find your our episode two weeks ago that you were on with uh, Moana, tell us about yourself. And I, I want you want to get to know you. So, tell us one thing about yourself that maybe most people don't know. Uh, um. I think for me, uh, I'm an artist. I've been doing art for all my life. It's around 2000, I think, four. Um, 2008. Yeah, I took a break. Um, and then got back in around 2016. Um, but people don't know about me. I would guess say <laughs> a lot. <laughs> read a okay. lot, so, like right. books, like <laughs> real books, <laughs> like things I, that. I think he's trying to shame us. Be like, we don't, don't read that stupid comic books. <laughs> I mean, I love, comics, but I like books. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, I love that. But, um, I love that. What kind of what kind of stuff do you read? What kind of what kind of stuff do you prefer to read? Or you just uh, thrillers, read mystery, mystery, sci-fi. Yeah, horror books and stuff. Yeah. Okay. But I'm a whole book reader. Nice. Do you have a favorite book that we need to know about? Not currently. Like, I love Justin Cronin. He's one of my favorite authors. He writes The Passion, if you don't know that. It's a really good yeah. book. Yeah. It was a short lived team of thoughts. Uh, um, but yeah, Cronin is my dude. He's a good author. All right, uh, Javon in the chat says this is as low key as I've ever seen Ryan. It's me because it's early, Javon. <laughs> early. Okay, we it's talked long. about this two weeks ago. It, it, it's ten early. o'clock where you are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On I'm a not, Saturday. I'm not awake until noon. So. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm here. All right. All right. So um, we're here to talk about, again, your your book with Moana, Manui, Moana Nui. I don't know why I can't say that all of a sudden. Um, so tell us about the book. What's the name of it? Because I'm not going to try to pronounce that name. Um, it's okay. It's so okay. We- um, <laughs> so we are, uh, this is the third book in a series. It's called The Adventures of Akoa and Nohea, Journey to Akua. Um, this is the third entry to the previous entry of The Ancient, which I was the illustrator on and now I'm the illustrator on this book. The first book is basically a love letter 
um, to Moana McAdams' his father, uh, Ray, um, but it's called The Adventures of Nicole Ray, uh, Fishing with Papa Ray. Um, the second is a jump, a little bit older, um, and it starts a new path um, into children's fantasy. So this is a children's fantasy book, um, and it dips into Hawaiian culture and lore um, with BIPOC representation. The uh, second book, book it ends off in the cliffhanger um, that our lead character, Nicoa, gets kidnapped by a villain called the Nunu, and the Nunu from him, but he is saved by a water sector named uh, Vanna, um, which you would meet in the second book. And by the end of the book, you end off with, her with uh, uh, knowing about the Moa gods for those three there. Uh, um, and then we go right into the third book, uh, Point in Time, where it kicks off, right off where it kicks off, and then we start a venture, a journey for our main leads have changes, um, and get a new character named Namaka who guides them on, the, uh, on their path for the rest of the series. Uh, third book, there's a lot of stakes, um, a lot of changes with our four leads, um, which I'm really excited. Really hoping uh, this campaign gets funded because I really want to produce this product because this is all me. Um, I had a different illustrator. So the second book is more graphic, um, but this will be more in line in my style and um, more in depth. Um, there will be a lot of texture, a weight. I want to make people feel like they're in that world. Um, book really want to take the children's uh, market to the next level quickly because in this book there's a, a lot of a lot of stuff that has such a short period of time. But it's worth it, you know, and I really would like to see where it goes. Um, and I'm excited because I created for this next book and I really want to bring that character to particular. So I'm just really, really stoked about and really proud of where this is going um, in the next book. Because this next book is the game book, as we call it. It takes the book for the rest of the series uh, to book five. So... Um, there's an outline for this series, done a fantastic job. Um, we can't wait to show what it's about, but more importantly, it's about culture, it's about representing, it's about life lessons, but it's more about presenting new. Um, there's a lot of mm -hmm. IPs that repeat themselves, themselves, but this, this is fresh and new. I can't tell how original this is. It's a very very original IP, very original app, and it's something that, that we want to bring to fruition for, for our supporters. Um, and it's not just for children, everybody, um, because this book changes the growth rates and changes everything going forward in this book. Here's what the pages would look like. Um, so if you go down, keep going. I think it's one more yeah that is what the page um they will be more in depth still that's every page is going to be loved that's nice yeah. i love it um i was going to ask what's what's your approach when um for different like you said this book is for everybody but you know the the stars of the book are our children right so um or younger characters I know you, and I don't, maybe it's just because last month was October, but I've been seeing you draw, you know, vampires and, and, you know, uh, like you did, um, what's his That's name? Blast from the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, I saw you did, uh, the dude from, hey, why can't remember from Buffy the Vampire, uh, Angel, uh, the, uh, <laughs> and when I, when I saw that one, I was like, man, I used to love that show, you know? Um, is there a different approach artistically um, when you're drawing, you know, uh, characters who are who are younger, like younger characters and more um, vibrant color backgrounds and stuff like that? Or is it, you know, just something that you've kind of gotten used to as an artist and you can just go into it, you know, you can approach your, your content the same way? 
Um, when I'm doing, like, for instance, the and ink work, I'm, I'm portraying it as more of a rough style. Like, like I do have a specific style the way I draw. Like, Adventures in the Code, oh, no, hey, it's more animated. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to be an animator. Um, I was going to be working for, like, what I wanted to really, like, Pixar or Disney or works at the time. So like, uh, and when I went to school initially, it was animation. So I do a mm-hmm. animation background. So most, most of the kids, like I said prior before in book two, I had to keep it more graphically aligned to the original book of the book that uh, Moana did. They were It's very flat graphic what the prior illustrator did. I wanted to keep that going. Uh, I've, this is all me now. We're, we're all focused on just one element. point. So I'm approaching book three more like an animator. My kids, more animator, like very animated, very expressive, very, very you know, you can feel and pick up of their praise when you read the book. Um, when I'm doing like Inktober or if I'm painting, I'm more in the element of me being a fine artist because I'm originally an artist, I'm a painter. I am a painter thick and through. The thing that I can't express anything more about it, uh, like when it comes to doing like comic book, I paint the picture before I put like inks on it. Like that's how I apply my words of painting before anything else. Um, so I'm a painter. I'm, I, I'm in watercolor, oil, acrylic, and work in. So everything is paintings before prior than anything. Um, when it comes to doing Inktober, things of that nature, like the the angel spike, all those pictures that you, I did, those are things that are paintings. It's just mm. inked hot. Um, so that's, that's what those are. Um, so when I approach things like me being in that moment, and when I'm doing illustration, work like the adventures of the going ahead there is a specific style because i used to be an animator so that they're, they're two different things it's in my style all the backgrounds that you see all built up like the temples that i'm going to be creating the trees be painted like you're going to be walking painting so that's that's it so but the kids are going to look animated they're going to be you know fleshed out but to also be painted as well. Um, so, painter, that's what I am. That's what I do. That's how I roll. So, that's my. Um, but when it comes to style, I, I just, it's my, my own thing. I don't, I don't really follow. I do have influences. Like, I love, love people's work. Um, painters, like, I like Carlos Alonso. He's a painter. He's a Spanish painter. A lot of people know him. Mm. Bosky, you know, he's another influence. Uh, screen printer Goya is a big influence of me, you know, and like, you know, the Harlem Renaissance, the whole African movement and art is big influence, you know, thick and through when it comes to book artists. And it's, it's Kirby, you know, Kirby's my boy, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, there's parade. Has an influence on me, you know. A lot of people, um, uh, not Rob Liefeld, unfortunately. I'm sorry, but um, but uh, yeah, yeah well, just, three weeks ago, I might kick you out for that comment, but I, I'm I know sorry, I'm gonna yeah, get you, I'm gonna get crucified because I don't like Rob Liefeld, but <laughs> reasons why. <laughs> yeah, um, I, feel like I love his work, I love Deadpool, so that's what. I mean. That's me, but um, yeah, I'm a painter thick and through. But approaches to styles, there's only there's only I only have one. That's throughout my whole entire thing. You can see all, all my line work in the actual picture. I, I don't have a specific style that I follow. It's just mine. Yeah. So you mentioned you tried to become a you initially wanted to be an animator but you also say you love painting 
So I'm assuming you would prefer to do painting over animation also then? 100%. And 100%. Like, I, <laughs> I love animation. I love, I have, it's, it's in my, my blood. I mean, I love the way King Pictures move. It's one of the best experience of anybody in life. That you draw and you can manipulate it and change it and go forward. Um, I have years, but animation is not done traditionally anymore. All done on, um, which is, it, it makes me sad. You know, we haven't had traditional movies since what? I think the last one was Princess and the Frog decades ago. So, um, yeah, I love traditional animation. I haven't done it, I think, about seven years. But for me, it's it's bread and butter. It is the, the all tools to see you manipulate your images in such a short period. Um, but like I tools are tools, computer tools, you know, they're all subject matter. They're the way the way they're how they're done. So just another tool. But I mean I love tradition, but if if I think appropriately and if I had more amounts of money it will be canvases all day, all day, all day and all night. So not possible because I don't have five to six hundred dollars to spend on bright and canvas. Bruh. So no, so when I can a tool that can get me brushes, paint, and all that, and you know, but um, yeah, I mean that kind of thing. You know, so I mean, I am a painter. I would paint than animate. See that pun there? I'd rather than animate. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. No, um, I love it though. That's um, it, it's good to have you know passion for for the thing that you that you're that you're doing on a day-to-day basis you're you you uh you're a full-time artist right no art is like my my, my side thing i i have a, i have a nine to five um so i wrote but like if it would hurt to do art 24 7 i just yeah. don't have that opportunity um uh, it is like what i do you know it's my thing it's my piece it's like when i start painting or drawing i go to like another place so. that's a conversation too that that i've had with a bunch of different people what do you so two things what would it what do you mm-hmm. think it would take to get you to do art full time and do you think it would change the way that you view or feel about art if you had to if it was your main you know your only source of income if it if you had to do it to pay the bills, I don't, I don't think had so. To... I don't think so because me, I mean, like I went to where we were all about death, you know? So it was mm-hmm. like, like deadlines is something that is now. Um, I like to give something of myself a goal of deadlines. I don't mind any of that at all. You know, if something has to get done, um, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it could be all audacious, crunch, or people expect a, a turnaround. But like I come from a square, turnarounds were natural, you know. Like, and it was our bread and butter. We were all about having deadlines and having goals. You know, I have a friend of mine. He works for Lucasfilm. You know, he works on The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, all those, those new shows that are coming out. And his de- it's like his bread and butter. If we didn't go. To- to a school that didn't teach us that and being that, that audacious, he wouldn't succeed and he's succeeding. Like, it, it's where we come from. That's how we're built in. That's what we know. So, lines is not something that's hard for me. Um, but I also don't want to produce shit. You know, I don't, don't want to throw out crap that is just in nonchalant. And nasty, you know. So right. I'm used to doing something that I believe, even that I care about, something that I love. You're going to get the best of me, you know. Foremost than anything, you're going to get the best I love. If I like your character, if I like your story, if I 
believe in your story, you're going to get the best of me. Believe in it. I'm not going to put my name on it. It's that simple. So for me, it's it's about if I could do art full to more that I would love to do because it's passion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something I love that I love to do daily. Um, and I wouldn't get tired of it ever because it'd be something new all the time. You know, you know, and I love in painting people. I love, I love painting people. I love doing characters. I love work. I love doing painting work. I love doing fantasy work. Places where you can go. Most people know me for all my horror, shawl, nasty shit all the time. Wait, so, wait, wait, like, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Morgan says you're doing you, solitary. Are you? Are you? Are Morgan doing solitary? Are you? Are you? Is this real or is Morgan playing? What the sol- the solitary? Uh, Morgan has a book that he's that he's Morgan been writing. Solitary. solitary. Yeah. Yeah. I'm what? I didn't know this. I didn't know that was official. I know he was taught. I know he was hoping yeah. to get you to, to work on it. I know he was hoping to get you to work yeah. on it, but I didn't know y'all were y'all officially had said you know you were working on it together. That's that's dope. Um, that's news to me. I'm 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 happy to hear that. That's gonna be dope. And I, I, and I think you will definitely enjoy because you like like I said your your style is perfect. And I like I said I've seen the the horror stuff that you do. I know <laughs> I know that that's gonna be dope. Okay. Well, I, you know, okay. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, um, my full-time job is, is as a graphic designer, you know, for, um, I, I, I work for the department of veterans affairs as a, as a visual information specialist. So I know that, you know, art is my, my full-time job, but then I also come here in the afternoons and the evenings and the weekends and still do art, you know, still do graphic design, still do, you know, make content that's centered around art. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't get tired of it. So I, I feel the same way you do, but I know some people, some people, when it comes to, when it comes to deadlines and it comes to, to having to do things, you know, having to create for other people, I guess you would say it's, you know, it can be kind of draining for some people. So that's, that's good to hear. Oh yeah. Kyron, is your is your computer still acting up? Are you all right? <laughs> Look at Kyron's face. He's so, he frozen. looks so frustrated. He looks so frustrated. He's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh he was having some issues with, is. his, uh, with his computer. There he, he is. is. There he is. I, I want to restart, but Danny's scared that it's gonna it's gonna cut out the feed. So I, I'm just gonna do what I can, I guess. I can't, I'm, I'm well. I can't hear your. Uh, <laughs> I can't hear your fan. I know it was bad in the beginning, but Morgan's um, like my computer's about to blow up. I'm like, all right. I mean, if you guys want to help support me get a new computer, you can buy our merchandise at <laughs> fortellspodcast.com, and those proceeds go to Danny and I, and it'll help us get new computers. Or you can go to uh, Ages of Geekdom and maybe support us through Twitch. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just saying subscribe. we can use those. Subscribe, subscribe. You know. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Well, if you want to, if you want to restart it, you can. But somebody in the comments is saying that it won't cut you off. I just don't know because you know y'all never give me admin rights to anything. I'm just here to talk and and show my bald head off, I guess. Okay, but hey, again, we're on agency geek dump, so you have the exact same admin rights that I have. You have the same login info that I get. So I don't know what the hell this is all nah, about. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> But well, I want to bring this back to why Ryan's here, not about my computer, because my computer okay. s- seems like it's not as loud now. Um, <laughs> so what was it about Moana's book that really attracted you to it? Like, was there one particular thing? Was there just everything that you me, 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 Moana, our, our partnership, our friendship, our, like, thick and through, it's like eating a good steak. Like, we mine creatively. Um, so what attracted me to the event hey, it was subtle. Like I just sent her something, like her through Mike. So, so like it's like, here, let me draw these kids, do these kids real quick. <laughs> like I drew the kids and sent them to her. And she's like, we started talking about book. Well, she wanted to bring her series back because there was a hiatus in time. Um, so there was a hiatus. Uh, that she took 
And then she was thinking made a route with the adventures of Nicole and O'Hea. And we incorporate more of her culture into the book. There's culture into the first book. She really wanted to get really into the culture of the book. She wanted all of the books are bilingual. Um, spoken in her native tongue, Hawaiian, and then there's also there's English as well. So, but she wanted to talk about more the lore of Hawaii, is, the foundation of Hawaii, what they believe in, what they believe in, why nature is such a big part of their community and their lore and their, their beliefs. Um, so she put that in Shadows of the Ancient. Um, so we started talking about around that, but making an fantasy story like Lord of the Rings or Never Ending Story or The Dark Crystal, things of that nature creation, but also not, you know, because it's a fresh idea. People don't know about water protectors and water gods and moas and things like that that mm. come actually from Hawaii, you know? So we, we, we started talking about building a creative route for the Raven Nako and Ohea and then really presenting it like where it left off having a fun eclectic atmosphere with the kids but in the second book it takes a, a sharp turn and we meet uh doubt we meet fear we meet all these things inside a period of time in the second book and then you end off knowing what protector is about you know and where it's going to lead to in book so i really felt Confidence series because first off, it's original. Second, mm. it has by foundation. Third, it's about a culture that many people do not know about. And fourth, it was something that I my stamp on where nobody else could an original idea in such an original IP. You know, the first book is a level it's like our issue zero. If you want to think in comic book form, and this is like it, Shadows of the Ancient is like issue one and then we're going into issue two thanks issue two is like our terminator we introduce you to something new robot a new thing and all of that issue three issue two of that book which would be our book three is judgment that shifts there's a change dates, you know so that's three will go so like for me it's something that i'm really proud of and me Moana are like hand in hand. It's like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. We just, we're like that. <laughs> like, uh, we created something. Yeah, it's like when we're Washington, we created an outline for book three, and it was something that we're really into and something that we are really, really of. So, like, when it comes to being creative partners with somebody who is fluent in motion, and, and we just, just, jump off and make ideas and, and see because she inspires me to create something great, something that makes me happy and just crazy fun because I feel motivated. You get those creative juice, and you know, and it takes, it takes a lot to get me excited. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It takes a lot. Are you sure? Like you have to move me, you have to move me to make me say, damn, that was good, you know? But, you know, and that's how I feel about this book. Damn, that's good. Like that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's, and Moana, incredible writer, and she's incorporating her life, real Moana, because she's from Hawaii. So this is her life in a way that is presented to people to feel and enlightened by something new you know and it's going to feel like you're you're in a movie you know to present it that way you know you're going to go on a real journey you're going to go through worlds it's been fun that i'm really really excited about and we only have left yeah all right so you guys need to go out there support this book you know help them get funded they have a ways to go but like you said, there's six days left. There's definitely time. You just got to go out there and support them. All right. Got to. Got to. All 
Alright, well this probably is the best chance for us to maybe... You look like you're, you're studying something really bad. Are you are you ready for quick takes or...? I am. I'm always ready. Alright, so if you you've never... Only five minutes before, the, before quick takes happen. <laughs> <laughs> if you've never heard our show before, quick takes are... Serve sort of a rapid, rapid fire situation where Danny's uh, gonna ask you some questions and uh, you can get some answers for me. So hold on and let's start the show. Okay, so here we go. Um, Mr. Ryan Robinson, you already answered this first question, so we're just gonna jump right into it. Okay. Um, my number one question, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put a spin on it now that I'm thinking about it. Um, for the rest of your artistic career, you have to use only traditional means or digital means to complete artwork for any project. Which do you choose and why? Ooh. Ooh. See, yeah, that's, that's mean, bro. Man. <laughs> that's a little tougher. <laughs> Dare you. Dare you. Uh, um, I'm going to strip down to cost, being cost effectively. So it would be digital. Um, not to mention, I found my own path in digital. Um, mm -hmm. So cost effectively, it would probably be digital. Um, I love traditional art, traditional art, but cost effectively, it would be digital. Digital, for sure. Absolutely. I, I can understand that. Um, yeah, I had to I had to switch it up a little bit because I knew that I knew if I just said me, that was real me because I love both. <laughs> I love both so much. <laughs> I knew if I just said traditional, traditional, traditional or digital, which would you choose? It would be traditional. So, <laughs> OK, um, number two, um, I know you are a movie buff, but what you. in your in your uh, opinion? is the best movie genre and why um i watch ooh, i like thrillers and horror um mm -hmm. horror you can play with a lot of tropes it would be horror because horror could be dramatic it could be comedy i like comedy because it, it plays the factor of disbelief but having hope at the same the end. Um, mm -hmm. So I like the, you can be, be very masterful with it and be all, you can also tell a message before, you know, Jordan Peele does that in his movies. So be horror. Um, okay. okay. Okay, I can go with that. I myself, I don't enjoy being scared. Um, so I stay away from horror <laughs> movies. Um, but yeah, I, that's one all thing you and Morgan have Scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scary. But, but when I think of horror, I think of anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, my next question. I know that you are. Uh, well, I've seen in your in your um, pictures that you're huge on um, action figure figures. So I'd I'd ask if if you could only collect one um, for the rest of your life, would you collect? action figures for uh, your favorite things or would you collect merchandise like t-shirts and um you know hats and 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 stuff like that so action figures or merch and why <clears throat> a kid my dad really got me into action figures but i lost all my years when i moved hmm. um at thousands like i had all the old x-men figures like oh, black man. bears all of it all of that stuff all the bad figures you man anything at all so i lost it all um it would probably be action figures the fact that i have such a affinity of it and I, it's something that i grew due to my dad um was something me and my dad did together um so it would probably be action figures more than any now if i had the money Oh, time's up. <laughs> you can finish. You can finish. If you had the money, if you had the money, um, you can finish. That. I collect I have Funko Pops. That's like my new thing. I have like thousands. So they're across my mm -hmm. wall up here. 
So, um, yeah, I have tons of fun cops. If I had the opportunity to do what I want, sideshow action figures, a lot of hot okay. toys. But Ryan don't got thousands of now to do bro, all that. Them hot, bro, them hot toys get expensive. Them joints hot are toys ridiculous. Are fire. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful, though. Um, yeah. Um, I'm with you. I want to. I would. I want to collect more action figures. Me and um, and hearing that about your dad makes me think about my my. Yes, son. welcome to welcome to the end. Welcome yeah. to the end. <laughs> it's a it's terrible, but that's good. Okay. Um. So this is a question number four. Question number four is a question that I asked that I've been asking a lot of creators. Um, what is the best part of making comics, and what is the worst part? of making comics in your experience? Making comics is a story. The writer presenting what, like, I love reading a story and, and seeing where it goes. Um, and also seeing that, you get the images in your head, start filling out what you want to do. Um, the worst part of making comics is doing pan uh, panel, lining panel. <laughs> Making action scenes, making it flow accordingly, making sure that everything is presented precisely that the writer has it in his head as well. You know, so it's something, you know, it's a given process. You have a good writer and a good artist and a good creative, and it will go smoothly. Um, if yeah. you don't, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm it, sorry. It can be it can be frustrating. Um, I want to say <laughs> Victor uh, Victor Dandridge and Javon were having a conversation about that on on his show on a Stoke podcast. I want to say last week, and uh, they were saying the same thing. If if the writer, you know, does his due diligence, and you know, you have a good communication strategy between like like it seems you and you and Moana have. Um, it can be a, a great experience to to be an artist for a uh, uh, a certain comic, but if you don't, then it can be a real chore. Um, hopefully, yep. Kyron is hopefully Kyron is enjoying <laughs> the process of drawing all these horses that I've asked him to draw for our latest book. Uh <laughs> He's drawing horses so much, it's so <laughs> horrible. <dude. laughs> so, I, I grew up trying to draw Superman and Batman, and then I've now drawn sci-fi horses and cross-dressing spies hey versatility sir versatility um <laughs> okay uh last but not least um i i'm hearing that you are a lover of animated films and um as a person who you know is traditionally um animation based also i'm curious um for my other one of my other many shows that I do, we do a show called Top Five Live, which is also on H's and Geekdom. And love, um, love Top Five. Have another show also. Five Live. I got love I it, y'all. Y'all all crazy. Y all crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're are. crazy, Morgan. You're crazy, Morgan. Danny. You're insane. I'm on. I'm, I'm the only <laughs> sane person on the show. But he's insane. Right right on there. That's all that is. <laughs> you might be right on that. You might be right. I, I want to. Might be the same as my. On that show. Not gonna lie. I wanna uh I wanna <laughs> ask you off the top of your head, I want you to give me your top five animated films of all time. Lady Land Before Before Time. Oh man, uh, Land Before Snow Time. White. Um ooh, The Lion King. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let me think. I like a lot, man. The Prince of Egypt. Oh man, the Prince of Egypt. That's a good one. That's Isn't only four though. That's five. That's five. Okay. That's five. I'm, I'll still wait for you to say Aladdin, but I guess not. So uh, Aladdin is it, good. It's not like my fave. Um, my all-time favorite. You kicked off the show. <laughs> uh, I'm by now. I'm about getting. My... Oh. <laughs> Um, my favorite animated movie of all time is probably Beauty and the Beast. That animation is high par caliber and to the point where it's disgusting. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I have a lot of, a lot of animated. Like I like the, I like. Mm. Um, 
Like, I even like really modern, terrible animation like Titan A and stuff. I'm like, but if you want to get... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that... You want to talk about my favorite film of them? Um, it would probably be... I'm, on, I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to lie. There's only two. <laughs> like, there's Akira, because it can't be manipulated or redone ever again. Ooh. Okay? And I'm a okay. geek, and I'm terrible, but I can film all day. Street Fighter. <laughs> oh, that's that's a dope that's, show. That hey, dope. Street Fighter. I listen, I'm, I'm yeah. all day long. I'm, I'm with you on the street. I'm, I'm with you on that. I love um, Street Fighter. I, uh, it's not the best of it with Avengers. <laughs> I've I've yeah. never actually seen Akira. Um, I know what the movie is about. I know its significance. Oh, it can never I be. You need to go watch Akira. It is. Yeah. You need to go watch Akira. The frame. Go frame watch it with rate. your family, dude. It's a dope. The frame rate in that anime, like I don't know how. I don't know if it was. It's, it's witchcraft. I don't know what. <laughs> like it's incredible. Hey. incredible. Akira is still incredible. So this day. Yes, I think I need to watch like, it. Love Studio Ghibli films. It those are films like Princess Mononoke, okay, Howl, Howl's Moving Ooh, Castle, all that too. stuff. Cool. Yep. Stunning, Spirited way. Incredible yeah. animated films, but like when it comes, to, I love. I'm a. Like, I'm a purist. I'm, I'm assuming this is for Danny. You what? As in you've never seen Akira? I haven't seen it. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm going. It's to. okay, Danny. You'll get to it. Like, Danny's they don't, never uh, seen New Jack City, also, so it's all right. It makes sense. Yeah, we, I, I gotta watch don't Akira talk. in New Jack City. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta watch Akira in New Jack City in the same day. I'm gonna make it happen. But Akira, Akira is the thing. Like I can watch Akira all, and Street Fighter. Those are two animated movies I can sit down and watch all day and never. Wait, whoa, whoa! Javon says he's never seen Akira ever. It's okay. Jim. What the hell is going? But what's wrong with you? See? What is uh, wrong with y'all? I just, I wasn't, I wasn't there then. Like I was watching Dragon. Ball. I like I started my anime. <laughs> my my anime uh, journey started with Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, and I watched. Mine's you know, too. Hey, I bro, my, Ronin, mine's too. Ronin Warriors. Ronin Warriors. Yeah. Hey, uh, Damn. If you happen to have Amazon Prime, Ronin Warriors is on Prime Video for free. Oh, nice. All day. You can. I yeah, watch. You can watch the entire season. Yes, I'm gonna have to. And I started off. I started off watching Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. It came on at five o'clock in the morning, here in California. I I remember I was up one morning and I was like, "What the hell is that?" That's what I used to do. I knew I was up at five o'clock every morning, like in the wee hours of the morning. Yeah, before I went to sleep. Yeah, but but, I I mean, I love general animation. Will never get tired. You know. Um, I like stock motion animation, one of my favorite mm. games of all time. Like, I, I love it all. Like, I'm mean, really a Meryl Del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah, that's something I want to see really, really bad. New stop motion film that's coming yeah. out soon. So, I'm a, I, um, I yeah. what is the name of that? Um, Key and Peel have a yeah, uh, animation. Well, uh, Oh, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, that was good. That film on Netflix right now. What? Well, yeah. Um, oh, it's already yeah, out. Where they said, you know what's, up? what's up? It's already out. Yeah. I already watched Wendell it. And Wild. Okay. I watched that like four days. Mm-hmm. See, I've been so I've been too busy. I, I'm about to make it happen. <laughs> about to make it happen. <laughs> Bro, I got work, so that's something I'm probably do today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It is I'm long. Like, but it- for, it's great. It's great. I still have to do like the last four episodes of Andor. I'm just behind. <laughs> yeah, I'm behind. Yeah. But, um, Love it. Yeah. All right. Well, this is the end of our show. Uh, it's been great having you on again. We never, the last time though you were on, we had a question that you never actually answered. So, did you ever come up with a movie that you have not seen that? feels like everybody else has seen i just want to know it will probably be let me think 
I had it on. Okay. Ryan has seen every movie in the world twice. I've seen a lot of movies. Watch it be like the color purple. Uh, so hard because there's movies I refuse to watch. Like <laughs> I, I didn't. I don't like any of the Jurassic Park sequel. So I only like None Jurassic. Of the sequels? Yeah, I only like Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. I have not seen Jurassic Park Dominion. I refuse to watch it. Um, Come on now. So. Let them in. I don't like. I've seen enjoying. Jurassic World. I've seen Jurassic <laughs> Park 2 and 3. But I, I didn't see the sequels to the new thing because it just looks <laughs> just trash. Um, <laughs> Chris Pratt was okay. I think I have one. Um, I, I think I've not seen. I've not seen. From a standpoint, I think everybody else has seen uh, the last Hunger Games film, Mocking J two. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah, a lot of people the kids saw all those movies back in the day. Yeah, me and the, I, my my kids were reading. One of my kids was reading those books for school. I want to say at the end of last year. So we. Ended up watching all of them. Um, okay, that's a solid answer. That's a solid answer. I've never seen 100 seen games. Oh, like my favorite one is Catching Fire. I just didn't finish them. Didn't, yeah. okay. Catching Fire, I think, was the best one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the best one. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take y'all word for it. I haven't seen any of them. So I hated that they had the. That. that they had the Black Village picking cotton. That was, that was really weird. <laughs> Wait. Wait, did y'all just sidebar? Did y'all see that TikTok video about these uh, two black dudes that went to the uh, the Civil War uh, reenactment? <laughs> it started picking cotton. I saw it. I did see that. I was like, "Bro, these dudes are hilarious!" But and they're all like, "We're big. just getting into the. <laughs> We're trying to make it authentic. We're trying to make it authentic." <laughs> All right. It was like they threw the cotton on the ground. They was like, "Pick that up." Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I get it. Sir. I said that's terrible. Stop it. Yo. But anyways, oh, anyways, uh, we appreciate you coming. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate everybody uh, joining in the chat. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. Um, we will not be having a show next week. Um, I will because be, of Danny. I will be. Uh, we did not have a show scheduled for next week. But yes, I will did. be at uh, <laughs> I'll be at Durham Minicon next Tuesday, next Saturday, um, so I'll be working. Um, but you can catch us the week after that. Who's our guest the week after that, Kyron? Um, it's gonna be Travis Gibb from Orange, Orange Cone Coast? Productions yeah. and Scout Comics. Yep, yep. Um, so we will see you then, Ryan. In, in the meantime, Ryan, where can people find you? Uh, Facebook and Instagram R Square Two Four Eight www.theartofryanrobinson.com on Five Star Fridays on Age Geekdom, um, 6 o'clock on Kickstarter currently at moanatheauthor.com. It's left. Please share, support, kick it. It's worth it. I'm telling you. Make it happen. Absolutely. Kyron, where can yeah. people find you? Dang, you're just going to throw this around. You usually have to do that too. Um, you can find me at tourscomics.com. Um, I'm messed up now uh, you can also find my work on instagram twitter tiktok and tumblr at taurus comics uh danny Tum- where wait. can people find no nah, wait don't don't skip over tumblr when, when did you what? when did you start the tumblr you know <laughs> you never mentioned tumblr Thousand... you never mentioned tumblr on here that's because i i don't post it really anything on there <laughs> whatever goes to my instagram also goes to tumblr that's all okay. it is all right Okay. So if you cool. follow me on Instagram, you see what's on Tumblr. Unless you want to see my naked photos of uh, a Starcore, which hey, um, backers of Starcore, I just submitted the, <laughs> I just submitted all the files to the printer for Starcore last night. 
Um, so hopefully you'll be getting some books in the mail within the next month or so, hopefully. But Danny, where can people find your work? Um, if you're looking for me, the best place to find us is fourthwallpros.com. Uh, TikTok. Or on social <laughs> on media at the Ace Blade. Um, I did pick my TikTok back up, so I'll be making more content on there too. Um, but that's all for us. Um, uh, Kyrie, you go ahead. I'm, I'm not even. See, this try. is why you. Why? <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> You got I can't with y'all. What is going on? All right. Again, thanks everybody for checking us out. Um, if you've never caught our show before and you want to listen to past episodes, you can go to our website, fourtalespodcast.com. That's number four, T A L E S podcast.com. Also, don't forget tomorrow is the Geeks Council for Ages of Geekdom. They're at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. So check them out on Facebook. Twitch and Twitter. But until next time, sign our goodbye and please take care of yourselves. Hey. My bad. Okay. Apparently, okay. Uh, most epic talks is actually coming on right after our show. So if you're here, just oh. sit down, sit tight. You're going to be listening to Michael Watson talk about, I don't know what Whoa, he's going to be talking about, but yeah, he's, he's going to be go. talking about, so sit tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to know what it is Quick is trying to say. <laughs>